Welcome to Presume Technologies. I'm Venkat. This is part 15, Loops in C Sharp. In this session, we will be talking about for and for each loops. In part 13, we have seen while loop and in part 14, do while loop. Let's look at, look at an example of good understanding for loop. To do that, I'm going to create an integer array. So int numbers. And if you're new to arrays, please check my video tutorial on arrays. So I'm going to create an integer array whose size is 3. And I want to initialize this array with three elements. So numbers of 0 and 1. Okay, so we have initialized this array with three elements. Okay, now if I have to pull elements out of this array and print them, there are several ways to do that. I can make use of while loop, for loop, and for each loop. Okay, to compare and contrast the differences between while and for loop, let's do that with while loop first and then we will do it with the for loop. So to do it with while loop, I'm creating a variable of type integer int i is equal to zero which is going to act as a counter for us to loop through the array while i is less than numbers numbers is nothing but the array numbers dot length so while i is less than the length of the array and if you look at the length of the array it's 3 so is 0 less than 3 that's true if that's true i want to print the elements in that array so numbers of i and then I need to increment the value of pi. Okay, so if you look at this, if I go ahead and run this program, it prints out 101, 102, 103, all the elements out of this array. So let's look at this while loop. What's happening? I'm using a counter here, i, which is initialized to 0. Okay, is 0 less than 3? True. So it gets into the while loop. Numbers of i. In numbers of 0th position, we have 101. So it prints 101 and increments the value of i by 1. So i becomes 1. So is 1 less than 3? That's true. So print the number at numbers of 1 location, which is 102. It prints 102. Increment the value by 1. So it becomes 2. Is 2 less than 3? That's true. It gets inside. Numbers of 2 is 103, which gets printed increment the value of i by 1, so i becomes 3, is 3 less than 3, that's false, so it gets out of the loop, and that's how it's printing that. So if you look at the while loop here, we are doing the initialization here, we are doing the condition check here, and we are incrementing the variable here. So we are doing, you know, initialization here, condition check here, incrementation, incrementing the variable here. But whereas, if we have to do the same thing using for loop, Let's see how to do that. So for int j equal to 0, j less than numbers dot length j plus plus and numbers of j. So if you look at this for loop, we are doing the initialization. Okay, we have to say console dot write line console dot right line numbers of j so if you look at this for loop we are doing the initialization here condition check here and increment all within the for loop but with while loop it's slightly different but the fundamental principle behind looping through the elements is the same we need a variable we need a counter we need a boolean expression and we need to increment the variable that's participating in the boolean expression in a while loop we do it at different places but in the for loop we do it at the same place that's the only difference so now if we go ahead and run this program the output should be essentially the same so it's 101 102 103 this is printed by the for loop and this is printed by the while loop okay so a for loop is very much similar to the while loop. In a while loop, we do the initialization at one place, condition check at another place, and modifying the variable that participates in the Boolean expression at another place. Whereas for for loop, we do all of these at one place. Okay. Now, 
if I have to do the same thing using a for each loop, let's see how we do that. So the way we do it is for each. Now, for each loop is basically used to iterate through a collection. For example, if I have a collection of numbers or collection of strings or collection of date times, whatever may be the data type. If I have a collection of something, I can actually loop through that collection using for each loop very efficiently. Okay, there is no possibility of you know index out of range exceptions when you actually use for each loop. You don't have to know how many elements are there within that collection. For example, if I have to use the for loop and loop through the elements within the, within this collection, within this this is an numbers collection. I mean this is an integer collection. Numbers is an is an array of type integers, so it's it's a collection of integers. Now if I have to loop through this integer collection then I have to know how many elements are there within this array. Otherwise, there is a chance of, you know, index out of range exception. But whereas, if you are using a for each loop, you don't have to know how many elements are there. You can tell your for each loop to loop through that collection as long as there are elements within that collection. Let's see how to do that. Now, we know that numbers is an integer's collection. So for each int, let's say k, in numbers. So what's going to happen? The for each loop will go ahead and look at you know this collection. It takes the first element out of this collection and puts it in this variable. And we can do whatever we want with that variable. So let's say I want to print the value within that variable. And now if I go ahead and run this, the output will be exactly the same, except that we are using for each loop here. So look at this, there is no counter, nothing, you know, all we are doing is pull out each element from the collection, store it in this variable, and do whatever you want, and then do that as long as there are elements in this collection. So it's very easy, and there is, I mean, when you use for each loop, you don't have to know how many elements are there in the collection, you just have to iterate through them. So if you look at this one, it just prints 101, 102, 103, etc. Okay, pretty easy, and there is no chance that you know um, you can actually uh, get any type of index out of range exception. But on the other hand, with a for each loop, well, uh, sorry, with the for loop, you have to know how many times you have to loop through it, depending on the length of the array. By mistake, you know, if it's a typo, let's say, you know, instead of saying less than, I'm saying less than or equal to. If you look at the size of this numbers array, it's actually three. Um, and we are starting at 0. So from 0 to 3, it's like 4 elements. But if you look at the array, we only have 3 elements within that. Now, if I go ahead and build this, and if you look in the status bar, build succeeded. I don't get any compile time error. But actually, when I run this, I get a runtime exception. Look at this. System dot index out of range exception. Okay, there are only three elements within this collection, but I'm looking for the fourth element because I'm starting at zero, and then I'm looking at the fourth element. Okay, so this is just a typo. I didn't know about this at compile time. At runtime, you know, it's trying to pull fourth element from the array which does not exist, and we have this index out of range exception. Okay, so if you don't know how many times you have to loop exactly, you risk, you know, risk getting these index out of range exceptions but whereas with for each loop you don't have that problem you know it it repeats as long as there are elements in this collection let's say for example later another element gets added you know maybe numbers of 3 equals 104 we have to bump the size of the array to 4 now if i go ahead and run that i don't have to make any modification to my for each loop it's just going to loop through this collection as long as there are elements so there are four elements now it's going to loop through four times and print all the four elements so that's the advantage of a for each loop so if you look at a for each loop a for each loop is used to iterate through the items in a collection for example for each loop can be used with arrays or collection classes and system collections namespace in .NET version 1.0 we have system.collections like array list hash table stack queue etc 
okay so we can use for each loops with them uh, we can also use for each loop with generics we can use for each loop with array so with any type of collection you can basically use a for each loop we will talk about uh, system dot uh, dot net framework 1.0 collections and generics in a later session all right so before we wind up I also want to talk about two very important keywords, you know, when it comes to working with loops, uh, break and continue. We have already seen one implementation of a break, you know, in the switch. When we were talking about a uh, switch statement, we have seen that if we use break statement in a switch, in any of the case statements, you know, the control will jump out of the switch statement. There is another use of a break statement. You know, if you are in a for loop, or any kind of loop for that matter for while do while for it whatever loop it is for some reason if you want to get out of the loop you can use the break keyword let's see that okay for int i is equal to 1 i less than or equal to 20 i plus plus let's say I want to print the value of i so console dot write line i so if you look at this, this is a pretty simple program. What is this going to do? This is going to print numbers from 1 till 20. Now let's say I want to print only until 10, but I don't want to modify this condition. If that's the case, you can actually if i is equal to if i is equal to 10. just say break and look at this as I type break you know this is highlighted as well meaning that you know this break statement causes you to get out of this for loop so let's see so now what are we doing here okay starting at 1 and I less than or equal to 20 print this but then if I is equal to 10 we are saying break so what happens when I becomes 10 this break statement gets executed when this is executed it comes out of the for loop when it gets out of the for loop the program terminates and only until 10 will be printed so keep in mind break can be break statement can be used in two contexts okay when you are working with a switch statement you know if any of the case statements have a break break statement there it causes the control to get out of the switch statement if you use a break statement within a for loop or any loop for that matter, it causes the control to get out of that loop. Okay, so if I run this, it's going to print until 10, and as soon as 10 is reached, you know, this condition becomes true, it gets out of the for loop, so the rest of the for loop will not be executed. Okay, that's about the break statement. Now let's look at another statement, which is continue keyword. Okay, when do we use continue keyword? Now let's say I want to print even numbers. Okay, so if I have to print even numbers, let's start at zero. Let's say I want to print even numbers, and I want to print even numbers only until 20, for example. Uh, I'm sorry, only until 10. Uh, or I want to print even numbers until 20, but I don't want to increment the value by 2. Okay, if I run this program as is, it's going to print numbers from one, from 0 till 20. But I want to print only even numbers until 20. So how do I do that? So if, I mean there are several ways to do it. The simplest way to do that is obviously, instead of saying I++, plus plus, we can say I is equal to I plus 2. So if I go ahead and run that, it's going to print even numbers till 20. But since I want to demonstrate the importance of the continue keyword, we will do it in a slightly different way. Okay, so if i mod 2 is equal to 1. So if i divided by 2 is 1, then I'm saying continue. Okay, look at this. Again, the for loop is highlighted. Okay, so what 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 does this continue keyword do? Okay, if you look at this program, it's actually a three line of program, a very simple program. Now we are starting at zero, and uh, and then less than or equal to twenty, we are increasing the value of i. Okay, is zero divided by two is equal to one? 
now it's equal to 0 so this statement will not be executed so it will come here prints 0 and then comes here increment the value of i by 1 so i is 1 now is 1 less than or equal to 20 that's true it comes here 1 divided by 2 the remainder is 1 so it comes here so when this statement is encountered continue what's going to happen is it's not going going to continue from here it will skip the rest of the statement in the for loop go back here and start executing again so it comes here increments the value by 1 so i becomes 2 now is 2 divided by 2 1 false so it prints 2 so every odd number is now for every odd number, this condition will become true, and when this condition becomes true, this continue keyword gets executed. When this continue keyword is executed, you know, it will skip the rest of the lines in the for loop, go back here, and then starts again. Okay, so if I go ahead and run this, it's going to print even numbers till 20. So I hope this has demonstrated the significance of continue keyword. If for any reason, you know, in the for loop, you want to skip the instructions, you know, for a specific condition, you can have that condition and use the continue keyword. All right. So in this session, we have seen how to work with you know for loop and for each loop. We have compared and contrasted the differences between for and while loop. We have also seen how to work with for each loop. For each loops help us you know avoid index out of range exceptions. The difference between for and for each loop is that if you have to use for loop, you have to know how many times you have to loop through. Whereas that's not the case with for each loop. And a for each loop can be used with any type of collection classes, generics. Or arrays we have also seen the significance of break and continue keywords that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day